Hello friends, I want what you want and that is to help kids be the kid they were meant to be. This is part of our Broken Brain series that we are watching together here at Insight every other Monday night. Uh, it is Dr. Hyman's docu-series on a broken brain and this time we're going to address ADHD and autism and how to help children and first you must understand that your child is not broken there is hope it is never too early or too late to modify the brain it isn't okay so discovering that the child can't sit still, discovering that the child has some sensory troubles, discovering is just part of the, the beginning. It's the beginning, not the end, okay? So once we, ha once we know what's going on, once we identify that there's something different, it's not the end, it's the beginning. It's figuring out what can better build a body and a beautiful brain for this child. So let's dig into this a little bit. Let me tell you that these kiddos are always in constant fight or flight mode. And you as a parent, I probably didn't need to tell you that. You see it in your child, whether they're ready to just shut down and be done with you, or they're ready to go after you and battle for, for the remote control or whatever it is. So fight or flight mode, their on switch is always flipped on. They are in overdrive, overstimulated, and there are times where they just poop out. They just crash and burn. So common among these kiddos are gut dysfunctions. A lot of them are just constipated. Uh, yeast overgrowth is common, we can address that. Skin troubles, eczema, rashes, uh, and immune troubles, and allergies. So a lot of kiddos with ADHD and autism all have those common uh, commonalities among them. And factors that contribute to what's going on in their brain are mineral deficiencies, and an overburden of toxins. So in an adult body, if there's a toxic environment, pollutants, they might be oversensitive to their environment. Just think if you, you have a 200 pound man and a 55 pound child and they're put in the same toxic environment, it's going to have a quicker, harder impact on a tinier body. It just makes sense. Their cellular energy is easily damaged by toxins, stress, medications, and sugar. And what do kiddos like? Sugar, don't we all? What we wanna talk about are some things to avoid in their diet, artificial colors, artificial sweeteners, things have been processed, chemicals being added to it. When I do a diet history with a kiddo, what I quickly recognize is kids these days do not eat food they eat food-like products, and there is a difference. Their body is not getting what it needs, so it keeps craving this junk. So we've got to change their diet, and I know, I know, I know, I know, there are limited eaters. I don't call them picky eaters. I call them limited eaters, and you need to be a good role model for these kiddos. So working slowly towards getting them to eat real food and less food-like products makes a dramatic difference in their brain and their brain development. Exercise is key, getting them moving, getting that oxygen flowing to the brain. Stress and sleep management are very important. And supplementation. So I want to introduce you to omega-3s, healthy fats, and why they're good for the brain. I want to introduce you to vitamin D3, and that deficiency is linked to some troubles when it comes to cognitive thinking and repair. Probiotics, if you've watched any of my videos so far in the Broken Brain series, that gut and brain are easily connected. They develop from the same tissue when we are a fetus. So there is bacteria, there's microbiome, both in the gut and the brain, and that needs to be supported. And then a great herbal blend called Focus Attention which does exactly that. It can be given before school, after school, before they go bowling, before they need to focus. We can use this great blend for kids that can be put in juice or water um, or in their smoothie and that will help them herbally support their attention span. 
get those kids in the kitchen when they're involved with what they're eating and the food preparation they're more likely to eat it um, and technology so let's just jump there for a second wow did you know the average screen time the time they're spending in front of a phone an ipad uh, video games it's nine hours a day that's an entire work day and they're overstimulated. Just think about every time you get a text or an email or a phone call, how quickly you respond. And what if you don't scroll through Facebook soon, you might miss something. Kids are being overstimulated and then expected to sit still, pay attention. I know I would struggle with that as well. You see babies being entertained by phones. You don't, you, I have done hair for 20 years, been a hairstylist for 20 years, in the health industry for 10, and I'm telling you these days it's a lot easier for me to cut a kiddo's hair because they are glued, plugged into the cell phone while I cut their hair. It's a great babysitter, but these kiddos are overstimulated. It causes anxiety and it causes an addiction of another kind to electronics. So just stop and think about that for just a second. Now medications like Ritalin, those are used. Uh, what Dr. Hyman has shared is about three years is all they're good for and then they kind of poop out on you and then you're in trouble. And so to put kiddos on Ritalin at a young age, expect them to still function on Ritalin when they're in their 20s or 30s, the game has changed, the brain has changed, uh, the medications poop out and then what happens? So we want to start to address things with their lifestyle and the adults who have see a dramatic impact when they do. The Ritalin affects their sleep, it affects their hunger, and it affects their emotions. So I know it seems to help at school, but I know as a parent you've probably recognized that the child isn't sleeping very well, the child has no appetite, and maybe is a little bit more irritable and easier to anger with the ups and downs of using a medication. So it's not right, it's not wrong. Okay, it's not right, it's not wrong, um, but it's something that may need to be used or may need to be managed. And with lifestyle changes, diet, exercise, stress, sleep, and supplementation, we can help. Okay, so if you want to continue this conversation, reach out to a health coach like myself or Kim Cassidy in Ohio, or Jaina Vandehei in Green Bay. So us blondes are standing by to help you and your kiddo to understand that your child is not broken, that there is help, and it is never too early and it is never too late to start modifying the brain. So tune into these videos, a few more to come. We're gonna talk about the closure of a broken brain in just a few weeks, and that closure helps us Take the ultimate path to mending a broken brain, according to Dr. Hyman. So we'll talk real soon.